Atomic Heart. This is a title that a lot of people approached with wildly differing expectations. Some thought they would be in for a bit of open-world survival against hordes of strange and mysterious robots. Others thought it would be something like System Shock or Bioshock. Others thought it to be a simple first-person shooter with melee elements. And the various trailers and peaks of the game that were presented before release, well, they suggested pretty much all of these things, and the game actually does deliver on all of them as well, but this is not quite as good of a thing as it sounds, because on the one hand, the game has an open-world survival-style element to it, where you go to the overworld, which is crawling with hostile robots, where you have to pilfer and search for resources against hordes of respawning enemies that pose a constant threat to you, and you have to hack various systems of the overworld to eventually semi-neutralize areas, or access new locations via hacking cameras. There are even some side activities you can partake in to unlock special weapons upgrades. Meanwhile, you can also go into the game's dungeons for a more focused narrative experience, where you usually have a specific objective in mind that you need to solve, like tracking somebody down or finding an android's scattered body parts. And of course, there is plenty of shooting and hacking and slashing and bashing too, as you traverse both the overworld and the dungeons, and the countless puzzles that you encounter along the way too. Mostly of the locked door variety, but also a few spatial puzzles here and there as well, integrated into the arena, and occasionally it can be a mild puzzle to find your way around the level, but most of the time it's fairly logical where you're supposed to be going next. And to boot, there are also some RPG elements, where you unlock new weapons, new weapons upgrades like increased magazine capacity, increased damage, or special charged abilities like the ability to fire a sword blade out to cut apart enemies, or a charged shot for example. You also have more Bioshock-esque special abilities that also have their own upgrade trees, where you can upgrade your shield to blow apart and scatter enemies around you, or make you more resistant to laser damage, or a freezing beam, and all kinds of such nonsense. You can have three abilities at a time, one of which is your shock ability, which does pretty much what it sounds like. I played most of the game with the shield and the goop ability, which makes the enemy more vulnerable to elemental damage like fire, frost, electricity, which you can also use special cartridges to enhance your weapons with. In other words, There is quite a lot to do in Atomic Hearts. Quite a lot to do. And if you focus a lot more on the overworld than I did, for example, in my stream series of the game, you're probably looking at 20... I think the official stated goal was about 25 hours. But as I myself got through, mostly following up the story, in about 13 hours. So, not amazing for a full-priced video game, but... Not awful either. However, here comes a little bit of the problem. The game tries to do a little bit too much. I suspect because of the trailers, which the original trailer is fully pre-rendered. At that point, the game was a theory at best, and various later trailers added on various features and touches and things, expanding upon the original idea, until you arrive at today's Atomic Heart, which has a little bit of all of them. It has the Soviet-style aesthetic, it has the creepy robots, it has the melee combat, the ranged combat, the confusing, mysterious, make-believe world of Limbo, it has the robot waifus, it has the storyline, it has the special powers and the weapons upgrades, and etc, etc, and it has all of the things you were expecting it to have, And that is actually a little bit of a detriment, as the game feels spread rather thin. 
when it feels like a lot of the individual ingredients were just not given quite enough love and attention to really make them shine. The story being the clearest example of this. So I'm not going to spoil it. If you want to see the endings, you can check out my live stream video I did on it. Just you know, skip to the end and you'll see it right there. But to put it like this, the story has two endings. They are both incredibly disappointing. They, they wrap up practically nothing. In fact, one of them simply has the game kind of end, and you have no idea what's going on or what's happening or what the consequences of your choice were, or your choices indeed, and the other is the clearest sequel slash DLC bait I think I have ever seen. And for a full price video game to give me an ending that is simply just wait for more DLC, that is not a good ending. Not a good ending at all, which at the end of my 13 hour journey made me feel just unsatisfied. Like you went through all of this for that? Yes, this is definitely not a game you're going to be playing through for the ending alone. Maybe future DLC or expansions down the road might change this and build it more into a, a full-scale epic, perhaps, but being left high and dry like that does not exactly make me want to delve back into the game again all too soon, and certainly not if I'm expected to pay for the privilege. Leaving the ending aside, the overall storytelling too is far from flawless. The game has quite a lot of dialogue, to the point where the game will actually interrupt its own dialogue with new dialogue, which is not great. If you're actually listening to some part and think, oh, that's interesting, and you move a little bit too far forward, then, well, we're talking about something else now, and you can't just go back and re-listen to that again. So you could potentially lose out on plot because you moved a little bit too fast. In certain areas, we're talking about meters before you queue up another dialogue. Not Great. The issue is also that the game spends far too much time simply telling you the story, rather than hinting at it and allowing you to begin piecing things together for yourself. There is also nowhere near enough actual environmental information to give you the full picture. For example, there is there is a pair of um oh I'll I'll just tell you this one so. The robot waifus. I'm sure everyone is aware of the robot waifus, because their design is excellent. They're not in the game for very much. They're in there for a few cutscenes, and they are the last two final bosses in the game. A decent boss fight, although made absolutely trivial by the goddamn rocket launcher. But you pick up two golden rings. Wedding bands. As you're about to go fight the ballerina twins. Hum. And the game, in a cutscene, with zero input from the player, simply forces the main character to throw these away. And I have a sneaking suspicion that the eventual DLC is going to focus heavily on not throwing away those two rings. Or in some way, recovering them. The plot is very one line, you don't really have a choice here, you are simply the canary going further down the coal mine until you eventually croak, and your decisions, as far as I'm aware at this point, have no effect on anything except the one out of two endings you can get. But besides the, the story itself, the larger story, there is also the lack of environmental storytelling. This was something that the trailers seemed to hint at quite heavily. All of the creepy robots and like the, the children's uh, circus thingies with blood around them, they hinted at a world suddenly gone crazy, you know? This was a peaceful utopia, and oh, then all of the robots went mad and started murdering people, and you were expecting to see harmless farm machinery, or helper robots suddenly starting to kill people. Okay, well, 
that will turn into quite the catastrophe, isn't it? You're going to see cleaning robots having killed civilians. You'll have seen the little soda fountain that greets you early on in the game, finding some way to, I don't know, choke people to death with soda or something. But it's never really capitalized on. The creepy robots never really do anything overtly creepy. There is one scene at the beginning of the game with the weapons render, which is pretty damn good actually, but beyond that, well, all of the robots pretty much just fight using weapons. There is no example where you where you look at a robot, for example, and you wonder, wow, how did this kill something? It's it's rather obvious how it killed something. There's no elements where you see, for example, a um, a children's playground with a creepy robot in the center when you go like, oh my Jesus, this must have been horrifying. You know, there's plenty of corpses around, but they're just dead bodies by and large. The game almost completely, in my opinion, fails to give you the sensation that a horrible massacre occurred here. Instead, you're pretty much just making your way through abandoned and semi-destroyed facilities with a few cold bodies here and there and corridors full of enemies to slay. And there is almost nothing unique about those enemies at that point. You know, it doesn't feel like the, the robot utopia gone mad. If the enemies were replaced with pirates, or soldiers, or aliens, or indeed planned zombies, it wouldn't change the feel or the experience of the game almost at all. And that's a damn shame for a game that has such a cool and intriguing idea as, again, the robot utopia suddenly going berserk and slaughtering innocent civilians with no warning. More time to properly set up the world would have helped immensely in this regard, I think, making you feel more like the robots are a proper robotic enemy rather than simply just mobs to be mowed down whatever you come across them. And this lack of seeming finish permeates throughout the game, as it's not just the story. The combat is serviceable but uninspired. The melee combat is interesting with, with dodgings and sidesteps and swingings etc, but you've only really got one attack, a swing, and then a charged attack. And then you can change the charged attack into a couple different charged attack. There is no block beyond a special ability, a bubble shield that you have. The abilities themselves, you have a few of them, but they're not that interesting. The shock is simply a, a zap, the, uh, the jet is simply a stream of goop to make the enemy take more damage or slow them down a little bit, and the bubble shield is simply that, it is a shield. There is nothing truly creative about them. There's no, you know, ability to fire bees out of your hands or anything like that. It's pretty basic stuff. The ranged combat too is functional, but again, very uninspired. The sound effects are quite poor as well. The weapons sound very clinky clanky, not at all particularly impactful. The Dominator might be the one example of a good one, as that one has far more possess to its sound. The Kalashnikov sounds rather disappointing, the shotgun feels way too weak in its basic format, like this is a big shotgun and you need multiple headshots to even kill a, a basic enemy robot with. The enemies too get rather bullet spongy rather quickly, to the point that you might require entire magazines, several, to drop one of the intermediate enemies like the shock baton wielding white humanoid robots or the black combat modules. The bosses soak a ridiculous amount of firepower until you get the rocket launcher, at which point they become absolutely non-issues. And the weapon's variety is, again, not all that interesting. You'd think in the Soviet tech future, maybe you'd have, I don't know, uh, nanobots or uh, hand grenades with EMP pulses, or a special hacking powers, maybe, that disabled robots or turned them into friends temporarily, or crazy melee techniques with your polymer glove to, uh, like, bust them open, because you can hack them as a sort of surprise attack, but that's about it. You can have some different melee weapons, like a club or an axe, but at the end of the day, they do pretty much the same thing. And as many of them simply do more damage, 
they become less side grade and taste relevant and more, well, this thing is just better than the others. The ranged weapon too, again, they're pretty much just regular stuff like pistols and rifles and stuff. Uh, the Dominator uses energy and your little electrical pistol that also uses energy, but beyond that they're simple weapons. You don't have any uh, flamethrowers or gas launchers to use against the plant zombies, for example, or um, cluster rocket launchers or combat suit stuff or anything cool like that. It's all pretty basic. And hey, at the end of the day, there's nothing necessarily wrong with pretty basic, but everything is pretty basic, even the overworlds. Because you're thinking, okay, the dungeons, right, fairly linear stuff, maybe they're not too interesting, and most of them are not. The only one that really sticks out in my mind now is the Opera House one, because you are chasing down a, well, clearly lunatic fella that keeps talking to you over the intercom, and you have to uh, delve a little deeper into his perverted psyche than uh, you might be entirely comfortable with. And the Overworld, oh, I hated the Overworld. So... The overworld is, in my opinion, primarily a transitionary mechanism, where you go from dungeon to dungeon, because I don't see any reason to engage with the overworld. It has loot in it, sure, it has metal scraps and bits that you can use to get weapons, it even has the ability to unlock special upgrades for weapons, but all of my weapons are already fully functional, and the various upgrades I saw weren't all that interesting. Sure, it would be great to give my rocket launch the ability to have a magazine to make it even more overpowered, but it's not a particularly cool upgrade. There was nothing that made me go like, oh wow, that's something I must have, so it mostly just feels like a, if anything, a hunting ground, where you can look through the recipe of your next weapon and go like, okay, that enemy has a bigger chance of dropping that thing, so now I need to figure out where that is and hunt those enemies for that thing, but again, unless you are really attached to a specific weapon and really want that weapon in particular to be better or unlocking a special upgrade, there's not a whole lot of reasons to engage with the overworld, especially not considering the fact that, well, it is filled with enemies, filled with cameras that will alert even more enemies to your location, and they respawn continuously, as there are repair drones that will restore the robots back to full life and functionality whenever they are destroyed, meaning that you are probably going to be expending more resources killing the robots than you are ever likely to get back from killing the robots. We should also mention here the increased exposure to puzzles if you decide to go too deeply into the overworld. The game has a lot of puzzles, usually the same puzzles repeated a lot. Every locked door has a little puzzle attached to it, and the game itself mentions again and again that these puzzles are awfully annoying because, yes, they are. A couple puzzles here and there to interrupt the shooty shooty bang bang, okay, I guess I understand. Personally, I'm of the opinion that if I'm enjoying doing something, I hardly want to be interrupted in from doing so, but. Okay, a break from the action, fair enough, fair enough, but these breaks should be sparing. Whereas with every door having some kind of thing where you need to stop and go like, oh, it's this puzzle again, or ah, oh, it's, it's that puzzle again. Oh, this one, match up the balls. And sometimes where your progress just grinds to a complete halt and forces you to engage with a lengthy puzzle, where often the solutions are not immediately obvious, it's... It is not a great deal of fun. And uh, to be fair, personally, I loathe puzzles. I hate puzzles, particularly in first-person shooters like this. I just want to shoot shit. I do not need a break from the action. I just want to shoot more enemies. So uh, if you as well uh, is, um, you know, the kind that's rather averse to a lot of puzzles, you are going to have a strong aversion to this game, as the puzzles too are... Again, just not very good, inspired, and uh, certainly not worth engaging with over and over and over and over again. And it all just comes back around again to me feeling like 
this game could have been something very special if a bit more time and attention had been paid to the individual parts of the game rather than trying to make all of these parts of the game. If, for example, the overworld had a grander mechanic to it, perhaps you were constantly being hunted whenever you were on the overworld. Perhaps the robotic twins would hunt you down. Perhaps there'd be some sort of a bounty hunter. Or perhaps the evil government might be sending strike teams to try and deal with you. Or perhaps the robots themselves might have developed some weird mutations where some had grown personalities or personal hatreds against you, for example. Or... Maybe you could have done more with the story. Again, the twins. Such a grand design, so criminally underused. For example, perhaps the story could be that the twins are kind of like the big sisters and big brothers of the Bioshock series, where initially they are fighting alongside you because, well, their master is your father, the person who saved you, created you, and whose bidding you are now doing. Obviously, they are going to be your friends. A sort of special call-in, perhaps, or support in early boss battles as a bit of a tutorial mechanism. Maybe you could even upgrade them and use them as sort of special weapons. Maybe even as a, a superpower upgrade where you can take possession of one of them and fight particularly tough enemies as kind of a super power-up moment. Maybe you could then have that customization turned against you as they turn less and less cooperative, as you start untangling the web that your father has woven around you, and the uh, question of whether or not he's really such a good guy begins to emerge. That would be very interesting. Or maybe more attention could have been paid to the combat. Better guns, better gun sounds, better gun animations, better gun handling, because the gun handling is dreadful. The melee combat too is floaty, and there is no sense of weight or connection when you hit a robot. And considering you are hitting one piece of solid metal with another piece of solid metal, you would expect a little bit of reverb, you know, but there really is none. Just all of the various pieces feel average, mediocre. And if I were to give this game a score based on the old, good old-fashioned scoring system, where a 5 does not mean that a game is bad, a 5 out of 10 that is, it simply means that everything about the game is average, middle of the road, straight down mediocre, nothing particularly innovative, but nothing wrong with it either then I would give this game a 6.5. In fact, this game is the definition of a 6.5 in my opinion, because it's not just average. The graphics are beautiful. The design of the enemies are quite striking in certain occasions. Some of the boss fights are really good as well. And many of the animations too are great. The um, Natasha boss fight, for example, against the big stompy dumbass robot. It has some really cool little spinny attacks, and you're in the arena surrounded by these creepy children's robot ballerina thingies. The opera too was a fairly memorable sequence. The robot twins, of course, have an excellent design. The overall story too isn't bad, but it just never quite clicks, and is terribly undermined by the ending again. And the combat as well, again, due to the design of the enemies, the the um, the graphical fidelity of everything, the shock effects, the appearance of the surroundings, it's certainly not a five, but it's nothing exceptional either. In fact, I would say that it might potentially reach the lofty heights of a 7, mostly based on the graphical fidelity and the relative uniqueness of the game's setting, but again, that ending just sweeps the legs right from under you as you're expecting a final solid payoff for your journey. So at the end of the day, Atomic Hearts is okay. It's all right. There's nothing wrong with it. It didn't crash a single time. It had no performance issues as I was playing it. It just feels uninspired, which is a shame because it also feels like inspiration is right there. It is on the horizon. It is it is within it is within your grasp to get that really 
cool experience, that really excellent, mind-blowing gaming experience, and it just isn't quite there. Like, the team had greater ambitions than what they were really able to carry out at the end of the day. So as a final conclusion, should you pick up Atomic Heart now? No. A hard no, in fact, which might sound confusing, considering the fairly decent score, and the fact that, again, there's nothing wrong with the game. I had quite a lot of fun with it, but you should not get it now because of the ending. I cannot stress enough the ending. Wait until the game's DLC plan is fully revealed. Then wait to see how the DLC evolves, see if people think that it makes the ending a lot better, and then scoop up the game at a nice discount with the story crucial DLC because it's gonna happen. And if it doesn't happen, well, then I'm gonna like the game a hell of a lot less. <laughs> because again, some endings, some endings have the power to simply ruin an entire story and an entire journey. And whilst this wasn't that bad, it was no, you know, final season of Death Note, but it was more than bad enough for me to be highly hesitant as to the idea of putting more money down to see the proper, presumably planned ending. So, with all of that being said, I have been Arch, thank you all very much for listening, and thank you to the people who watched the live stream as well. I did have a fair bit of fun with everybody playing through the game, and once more, the game's not bad. It's just nothing special either. Until next time, I've been Arch, and I hope to see you all again soon. Have a good day.